you know, to be pretty, you must be pretty on the inside, I believe. Um, and everybody has one part on themselves that is beautiful. It just takes there you to go. see it, not somebody else. There we go. What do I think of Creep Show's video? I truly don't give a damn, darling. I don't watch her known enough to do a video on, so <laughs> that's the tea. Persecution, it's like judging. It's so last century, you know what I'm saying? The internet harbors a lot of people who are anonymous and they feel like they could do whatever they want, but you can't. You truly this cannot. This needs to happen. And I think that, you know, there's been a lot of rumors, oh, Lily Jean's racist, and it's hurtful because whenever they say this, there's nothing. There's nothing that ever, they don't send a screenshot. It's like, I never created it. Again, we're not trying to offend people here, but we are trying to say, stop saying your suffering is worse. If I'm not complaining, shut the fuck up. Stop it, stop it now. We know what happened. And if you want to get serious here, they're trying to erase my culture. They're trying to say that the Holocaust never happened. They're not trying to say slavery never happened. So if you want to get real, we do have a problem here. We do have For example, back in the 20s and 30s, it was appropriate for white people to paint their faces black that were in entertainment because there weren't a lot of black actors. In fact, there were barely any. The Native Americans, the Indians. Okay, that's number one. Before that, the Vikings, though. Those are the true. Okay, I want to go there. You know, people created that, and it was, like, really hurtful to use a trigger word that they knew during BLM would be hurtful. So, you know, it's really, like, wow. And then my podcast, where I say that, you know, we all need to come together, I did remove because I felt that, you know, with BLM happening, perhaps the tone of saying, you know, although we all have suffered. That is not what you said miss lily jean not even close to what you said we all just heard what she actually said in that podcast there was no unity in that it was a straight come just together maybe uh, wasn't right so i did donate to black women's um hospitals and there's a lot of fun things coming and a day of reckoning is coming for people who have just been awful spreading rumors this is <laughs> where they came from um i want you guys to like you know read it check it out because it's it's hurtful there's no reason to hurt somebody and you know it's hurtful when somebody's like you dox me and it's like my address is online right now because i did nothing i never doxed anybody There's no hardcore proof. And see how rumors start? Now the rumor is that I hired somebody to dox somebody. Never if I have no followers, then why are you saying, you know, this is fake, that's fake? If I have no followers, then why does my name bring in money? Because it's all a lie. <laughs> it's a lie for money. Well, that's interesting. Because I'm not monetized. And I watched a whole bunch of videos today from other channels talking about you. And they're not monetized either. The channels that are monetized and have covered you and are making money, kudos to them because they've earned it for the crap they had to deal with when trying to cover you. So um, I wanted to share with you guys some of my thoughts. Now, I have my legal team taking action with all these people on Twitter who have been harassing me for literally two years of my life and I feel saddened that they're so mentally ill, they don't see what they've done. So, um, <laughs> a lot of them had my copyrighted images, and I'm a business, Lily Jean Beauty, CEO. And, you know, you can't do that. I have my trademark Except, on everything. Yes, we copyright. can. Because fair um, use applies, you even to you, Lily Jean. Else, you must ask them permission, just like a Clearly your mom misunderstanding the copyright laws and the fair use laws was passed down to you because both of you do not understand how fair use works. Nobody needs your permission. Video. You know, fair Nobody. use is uh, CNN, but CNN always reaches out to the person to ask. Uh, whenever you see a video from Twitter on CNN, they ask that person permission. Fair use. It was given. Uh, Again? No, you are um, this incorrect. Girl, I'm aware of the docs. She was sent a cease and desist 
a month ago or two months ago, something like that. And um, she didn't desist. She, she didn't have to because it's not defamation if it's not a lie. And it's not defamation if it's an opinion. So she could have 1,100 videos and as long as they're commentary, she's protected under the commentary umbrella. Do some research and get some actual legal advice, Lily. Not from your mom who absolutely has no legal experience, considering she didn't know the definition of grooming was even a real and, thing. Um, that's what's going on. You know, you can't just steal somebody's content. Um, stealing art pieces, having my face as your profile picture. With hmm. What about this young 12-year-old artist who you harassed and bullied and sent the mob after? All because she did fan art and then she realized who you were and that she didn't want her art associated with you and really nicely asked you to remove her uncredited art, mind you, that you did not credit her for, from your profiles and you refused as though you were somehow entitled to that because she betrayed you. What about that? Wouldn't that be considered a form of art theft? If you haven't already had a look at Sally Pimento's channel, she's done some fabulous coverage on Lily Jean. I'm going to be sharing several clips from her videos. This one just makes me laugh. It's Lily Jean and the Elena's there's a really, really strangely huge amount of Elena's that, that follow Miss Lily. But they totally legit, right? Like, that's, that's not sus at all. It goes on and on and on. this one here that showcases several of the proven to be and assumed to be sock accounts belonging to Laura and Lily and their little tiny army of two. You definitely want to check out Sally Pimento's videos. She definitely brings the receipts. I did speed this up because it's literally several minutes um, and I still did cut out quite a bit of it but it just it's insane to me all of these accounts that either Laura or Lily are the first to follow or they immediately follow one of Lily Jean's accounts after creating their account and they're identical the video was actually called um, Lily Jean's identical follow counts or similar, something like that. So now some clips on Mommy Dearest, and you can quickly see where Lily gets it from. I would assume that because the, you're all good you know, friends, the right? Smarts. You do all know that every one of you that continues to sit here uh, writing, you're not uh, anonymous. You do know that IPs are tracked even with hoppers, and we can find out who you are through subpoenas. Literally I used my entire video, okay? And they didn't ask if they could use my video. It is not fair use. Please reread YouTube's fair use action. You will find that what you Alrighty, thought was Lord, true you is asked not us to, true. So the follow. Then let's take a look at the policy. Either of them have actually ever looked at this or actually looked into what fair use means. You'll see in some of their own copyright claims or strikes or takedown notices, they say it themselves that the work is transformative, which 
pretty much immediately puts it under fair use. They seem to think that that somehow works in their favor. Meanwhile, it's the opposite. Next clips are from another of my favorites who have covered Lily Jean, the Butter Holt, and a lot of hers I'm just going to let play through. Um, some of the next clips are going to be me reacting to others reacting to some of the Lily Jean slash Laura Truman um, debacle. But for now, here is the Butter Holt awesome video. Rather, some highlights from her video all these videos the will way be she is in the description as well so that you can find on december 29th 2018 lily jean posted a podcast called cultural appropriation or diffusion lily jean was 17 at the time and her mother laura truman joined her the exact definition of cultural appropriation is never given by either lily jean or laura at any point during this podcast both gave examples throughout and the majority of those examples included the mention of blackface which is when a non-black person darkens their skin in order to look black, and this historically carried very racist undertones. They used that as the determination as to whether or not something was appropriation. The Wikipedia page on the topic offers important insights when it says, cultural appropriation is the adoption of elements of one culture by members of another culture. This can be controversial when members of a dominant culture appropriate from disadvantaged minority cultures. Throughout the podcast, both Lily Jean and Lore regularly mention the consuming of food from outside of one's own culture as an example of what people supposedly consider to be appropriation. Cultural appropriation is not happening whenever there is an agreed-upon exchange. For example, when buyers pay to import Mexican tequila into the United States, the exchange was compensated and was agreed to by both parties. Same when Mexican people open up restaurants and you go and pay them to make you food. That is not appropriation. I have familial and cultural ties to Mexico. Mexican culture falls outside of the dominant culture in the U.S. For every Halloween, if you go looking for a costume, you will come across a section of racist outfits. Stereotypical mariachi, bandito, or other Mexican-inspired looks are common. This is appropriation because these costumes are fully removed from cultural context, often have stereotypical and racist features amplified, and they are mass-produced to make money for people, often outside of the culture. And it hurts to see racist stereotypes sold and consumed on a large scale, especially when those racist tropes are being used to describe your family and culture and used to actively discriminate against people like you. When a group is already being treated as second class within a society, these occurrences should be called out for what they are, cultural appropriation. And of course, Mexican culture is not the only one that gets this treatment in the United States. Not even close. They're trying to make Ariel Zendaya. Um, to me, that's appropriation of Danish culture. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is not diffusion. No. At all. I'm including this clip because it was one of the only times that a concrete example of cultural appropriation was given, and it just so happened to be a black woman who was the supposed culprit. This fits in with the fact that I literally took pages and pages of notes with timestamps and messed up things that were said, but it seemed pretty clear that Lore, in particular, felt it necessary to blame black people for a lot of things. People on the white side are doing stuff. African American people are also, you know, the same way. They're lightening their skin, they're straightening mm -hmm. their hair. Um, do not tell me that doesn't look like a white woman. Okay. Here, Lore fails to take into account the fact that whiteness is the dominant consideration of beauty in the United States, a country that, you know, doesn't exactly have the best track record for treating black people well. It's very possible that black people might feel obligated to try to look more white in order to avoid racism in their everyday life. Or they may have been socialized into thinking that looking white is the only way to achieve beauty. Or maybe they just enjoy it. How they choose to look is not for us to judge. I'm going to play a clip right now from the podcast, and in it you can hear Laura speaking about Chinese shop owner. Uh, Chinese part of town, even when I was a kid, they don't want you in the store buying their stuff. Really? Yes, they tell you to get out. Oh. Yeah, to this day. Why is that? They don't want you um, shitting on their, their culture. So is that not a reverse thing going yes, on there? Yes, it's always been that way since I was a kid. Oh. You know not to walk into, which by the way, the Chinese have the best fresh fish. 
<laughs> they will literally come after you with a meat cleaver. Oh my I God. know, I have experienced it firsthand many times. This was one of the most disturbing things I heard in the entire recording. I was so concerned by these claims that I reached out to someone I know who lives in New York City. I explained what Laura had said, and I got a response which I will put on screen now. This New York resident explains that the area Laura is describing is actually pretty diverse, and many non-Chinese people live and shop there. This person also makes it clear that it would be very unlikely that anyone would get chased out of a store. Of course, this account from another New Yorker is not straight proof, but considering that Laura may or may not have lied on many occasions, I think it's important to note that this story is suspect. Especially because painting people of color as crazed and violent is a tactic straight out of the old-timey racism handbook that many people still use to this day. Lily Jean's reaction to this anecdote seemed shocked. But Laura is her mother, a respected figure in Lily Jean's life, a woman whose terrible views are loud and boldly spoken. When you grow up with a mother who behaves the way Laura does, it must be really difficult to grow into your own person. I think that Lily Jean will continue to hold on to, or at least align herself with seemingly racist ideas and actions if she is unable or unwilling to get out from under her mother's grasp. Throughout this podcast, Laura played a heavy role in driving the conversation, often steering into tangents. Toward the end, Lily Jean expresses that she's upset when it seems that some people are saying that their suffering is worse than others. We're not trying to offend people here, but we are trying to say, stop saying your suffering is worse. If I'm not complaining, shut the fuck up. But Laura turned it into a comparison between the suffering of black people and Jewish people. I won't get into the whole long history, but the vestiges of slavery absolutely do affect black people to this day, so it makes sense that people would want to talk about that. And they absolutely have a right to speak about the suffering they endure. Trying to silence people's ability to speak their truth is an abuse tactic, whether or not these people want to admit it. But the only actual concrete example given in this podcast of someone saying their suffering is worse than anyone else's is when Lore suggested the fact that her Jewish family had met relatives who survived at concentration camps had it worse than black people who didn't know their slave ancestors. There is absolutely no comparing the suffering of any two people. So this was a completely unfair thing to do. People should be allowed to discuss their thoughts and feelings without being belittled, without being told to shut the fuck up. I would have no issue with Lily Jean and Laura discussing their experiences as Jewish people if it wasn't done at the expense of black people and other people of color who are made out to be complainers. Just over six months after that podcast, the one in which Lily Jean stated that having Zendaya play Ariel would be an appropriation of Danish culture. A now 18-year-old Lily posted a video to her YouTube channel called Not My Ariel, The Little Mermaid, Halle Bailey Thoughts. In this video, she speaks about the casting of actress Halle Bailey for the live-action version of The Little Mermaid. Halle is a young black woman, and for this reason, she had been receiving hate from people who felt that Ariel should be played by a white actor. Lily Jean makes it clear that she does not agree with people who are sending hate toward Halle. However, the way in which she makes her case for Halle playing this role is very questionable. She talks about how Ariel endangered her kingdom so she could be with a man, and then, bizarrely, she suggests she may have abducted her crab friend Sebastian. She then tries to make a case for the idea that the music and the sound of Sebastian's voice are Jamaican, and for that reason, it makes sense to have Ariel played by a black actor. But I want you to see how she ends the video. Look at it. I mean, Ariel sitting there as some crab she abducted is singing Shalalala. Envision Hallie doing that and not Ariel. Like, the tone completely changes, and I feel like she would go much better with the characters. She literally ends it by asking us to imagine a black woman as a half-fish kidnapper. She wants us to think of a black woman as a criminal. <sighs> On January 18th, 2020, when Lily Jean was 18, she posted a video to her YouTube channel called New Year, New Me. In this video, she claims to have grown in her understanding of many things, including transphobia, gender identities, and cultural appropriation. Seeing this video actually felt like a punch in the gut to me. Lily Jean sounded so truly genuine in this video, and that's why it sucked to see her gloss over the issues in her cultural appropriation podcast and uphold the Halle Bailey video as an example of her growth in that area. Halle Bailey being Ariel. Now, I am very like, woohoo, so do not fight me on that. I said that, you know, Ariel's a Danish fish <laughs> because that's the book. And yeah, that's the book. But then if you look at it, you're like, this is Disney's The Little Mermaid, not the Hans Christian Andersen one, so it's totally different. But considering the message hidden inside that video, it doesn't seem that Lily Jean is truly able to see that what she's saying continues to be wrong and harmful. After watching the video, I felt a lot of complicated emotions. Was Lily Jean truly interested in growing? Did her momager force her to make an apology video? 
Was this a PR move or a young woman actually trying to be real for once? I honestly couldn't tell. And that's the saddest part about Lily Jean. She lives her life largely online. She posts so much content every single day. Yet, even when someone is desperately trying to get to know the real her, we still end up confused. Thank you so much for watching. This next section deals with discussion around SA and other sensitive topics. If you are not safe at this point, please do not watch the next section. I will add a timestamp where the trigger warning ends in the description. Except this type of mental abuse by somebody who's a mental rapist is, um, that, that should not be. Let's define some terminology in this section. Rape is a type of sexual assault usually involving sexual intercourse or other forms of sexual penetration carried out against a person without that person's consent. The act may be carried out by physical force, coercion, abuse of authority, or against a person who is incapable of giving valid consent, such as one who is unconscious, incapacitated, has an intellectual disability or is below the legal age of consent. Rape culture is a sociological concept. Behaviors commonly associated with rape culture include victim blaming, slut shaming, sexual objectification, trivializing rape, denial of widespread rape, refusing to acknowledge the harm caused by sexual violence, or some combination of these. In the previous clip, Lily Jean compares criticism she has received to being mentally raped. This statement is a clear example of trivializing rape. Rita Prachikupta explains why this is so dangerous in an article for Cosmopolitan from July 2016. Quote, rape is not a colorful substitute for something that feels unpleasant or exploitative. Rape has a very specific meaning. According to the FBI, rape is defined as penetration, no matter how slight, of the vagina or anus with any body part or object, or oral penetration by a sex organ of another person, without the consent of the victim. And like rape jokes that mock victims and make light a lack of understanding and empathy around sexual assault and further trivialize a crime that's already so overlooked in society. Comparing things that are not rape to rape devalues the experiences of all survivors of rape and sexual violence. According to the American Centers for Disease Control in 2010, 1 in 5 American women had been raped. 1 in 71 men had been raped. 1 in 21 men had been forced to penetrate someone against their will. These are official government statistics from 10 years ago and are likely outdated. Additionally these statistics only included answers from people willing to report their rape to officials. In 2015, the United States Department of Justice estimated that only 34.8% of rapes had been reported to authorities. Rain, Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, estimates that for every 1,000 rapes, 384 are reported to police, 57 result in an arrest, 11 are referred for prosecution, 7 result in a felony conviction, and 6 result in incarceration. This is a massive social issue, and it remains underreported, underprosecuted, and disgustingly prevalent across the globe. To trivialize rape by making clumsy and insensitive comparisons is to perpetuate rape culture. As writer Tilly Grove wrote in the Huffington Post in 2015, the word rape is used everywhere to mean things that aren't rape or anything like it, but it's near impossible to get people to talk about rape when it happens. Clearly, rape means everything except for what it is, sex without informed consent, and people would rather ignore its occurrence and prevalence than acknowledge it as the widespread, everyday reality that it is. As a survivor of rape myself, I personally call upon Lily Jean Truman to retract her statement and issue a sincere apology for drawing an insensitive, disrespectful, and harmful comparison. She may feel violated, and that is her right, but to compare the actions of individuals calling her out to rape is not only out of line on her part, it's also dangerous and perpetuates rape culture. Trivializing the everyday lived experiences of millions and millions of people around the world. I read this part because the audio from the original creator somehow got lost in my import, as I will with the next slide as well. Although I do relate very personally on a very deep level to what was just read. Now, if this latest example were the only time Lily Jane made an insensitive comment about the acts of violence in one of her videos, we could end this here. But unfortunately, she has a history of making such statements. In a video from 1st of June, 2020, Lily Jean compares the feedback she's received to the murder of George Floyd at the hands of police officers. I can't even earn an achievement? It's like people are verbally murdering me. It's horrible. And you know, with what just happened to this, this poor man um, of color, and to see people still on about this drama, I'm disgusted. Okay, this man deserves justice. And it's not just him, although he was a tipping point. It's everybody who's person of color just getting shot for being who they are. The reasons why such a declaration is harmful have been stated by multiple other content creators, whose videos will be linked below. 
This statement has also been called out across social media, via Twitter, Instagram, and other platforms. Yet the Legion has yet to apologize for comparing the critical feedback she receives to the actual murder of an actual human being. And while she did indeed provide links to petitions and donation funds in some of her video descriptions, to this day she hasn't even acknowledged that her words were highly insensitive at best. Mulling of another human without justification or valid excuse, especially the unlawful killing of another human with malice aforethought, premeditation. In no way does anything Lily Jean has experienced equate to her being murdered. The comparison is made worse by invoking, but not naming, George Floyd, whose murder by Minneapolis police officers in May 2020 gave rise to further protests against police violence against people of color and other forms of institutional racism. Hello, Jeannies, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing good. So today's video is something I've been thinking about a lot, and that's like, um, public shaming. I actually forgot how much she genuinely hurts my soul. Hello, Jeannies. She just seems like a Disney villain, like Ursula, but scarier, which is a very big feat to climb. Fair enough. I mean, I'm not verbally murdering you. It's I absolutely concur. Like, when I first heard her voice, like, before I had ever seen her face, I was listening to somebody playing a clip of her podcast, and that voice, I thought I was listening to, like, a nine-year-old, and it wasn't just the voice, it was the words coming out of her mouth that had me convinced I had to be listening to a child, and then, and then I realized that, oh my god, this is just a really horribly childlike, vile adult, well, almost adult, just an adult, new adult, whatever scarier which is a very big feat to climb fair enough i mean i'm not verbally murdering you it's called freedom of speech but i'm verbally <laughs> i'm here and i i quite admire karma and the dharma because i feel like she just um she's unapologetic she comes around she is blind like lady justice and oh, uh, yes. she, she sees all yeah so um karma is always there so i'm gonna start this with think before you type. oh lily what i cannot wait until lady karma finds her way back to you and your momager because oh when when that happens man you're in for a Serious reality check. What I love more than tortellini. What I love more than pissing people off. What I love more than being a straight up dick is just going to people. This this very phrase. Oh, Lily. That's quite <laughs> ironic, isn't it? <laughs> I like him. Wait, you want to follow me, yet follow everyone who only tweets about me? Girl, I can't. The stupidity. At least make an effort. But, oh, you can't because Twitter displays account creation dates. What's she even talking about? How I see feel when I see a post bashing me or cyberbullying someone else. Oh, also, Crimea River. Karma in the Dharma. That is one of those phrases that I'll only hear once. And we'll ever only ever hear once. I've never heard someone say karma in the Dharma. No. So health shaming, um, you know, if you have the invisible illness that you can't see, but you have, it's a little bit, like, more gut-wrenching when you have to go, oh, my fucking god, yes, I deal with this. For example, um, you guys know that I have an immune system problem, and I wasn't ready to tell you guys necessarily what it was. I shared in a group chat with people who were supposed to be my fans, but were setups. Link below on that. That was interesting. Jesus Christ alive. Do you know when you would get, like, the crazy look from people? You go, yeah, that, that, that person, they don't have their lid on properly. Lily Jane, I said this last video, has crazy, she is nutty behind those eyes, and she's just done, like, the whole... That was interesting. Like, seriously, it's... I really like this guy, and I I know this is, you know, a few months back, but I, I, the way that he reacts to this nonsense is really quite similar to the way that I'm reacting in my head, so I'm just, I'm, I'm leaving a lot more of his reaction in and adding less of mine just because it's, it's just, it's great. It's mad. Seriously, I'd be worried for her. I'd be so genuinely worried for my child if she was in a group chat with this woman. She genuinely concerns me. Like... On a, on a serious, serious note, I mean, I'm not joking, no jokes. I'm actually worried for her, like, safety. Like, you don't live with it, so you don't know, okay? You know, I also up. deal with a very tight pelvic wall, so when I'm very oh, yeah. stressed, it burns. It's not like a UTI burn. If you can imagine feeling, like, a pulsation where it clenches like that. Why? Why is Lily, who the majority of her followers are young teen girls, and younger even sometimes, why is she talking to them about her freaking tight pelvis? and a burning from the outside a little bit up, that's what it feels like. And if I calm myself down, it, it goes away. It's okay. You can't even see it. Like, you really can't. You can't see that type of, you know, fire. I mean, sometimes, like, there's a little bit of a rash. But... Lily, Lily, I hope that is, right? No <laughs> seriousness, right? Right? Yes? I don't think anyone wants to hear about your fucking family. Exactly! I, 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 I'm taking advice from the people. No one wants to fucking know. Secondly, I'm a fucking one of those I'm really scared I'm going to fire backwards. I was generally expecting the next part of the sentence to be, oh, angry, really, I would get angry once a month, and it's always the same time. Valor said you're on your period because you're scrubbing with the symptoms, apart from the fiery bit and the rash. I'd go get that checked out. That isn't normal. That, that's the best thing. <laughs> Please just go to, go to the hospital. But yeah, I, I said, like you. Chair. No one wants to hear about this. Come on. Like, no one cares. Seriously. Why am I a bit... I don't know. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you.
see how old's my boyfriend mm -hmm, i see you <laughs> so when i was nine peep was i suck at math i'm like a stupid fucking wild We're gonna let that one sit. Yeah? What's wrong with that? See, this is why I don't want to put him on my stories, on my video, because I say that we're, like, nine years apart, and it's, like, a problem for people. Yet I'm a legal adult, and we've, like, known each other. And as long as you have consent from a parent, it's fine. And, um... No, no, no. No, Lily. That is not true. A parent cannot consent for their minor child to be in relations with an adult. That would be illegal on the parent's part as well. My god. Like, not consensual, it's- No, no, no. It is weird, Lily. It is very weird. A 12-year-old dating a 17 or 18 year old is the equivalent of any child dating any almost adult. A 17 year old is almost an adult. A 12 year old is just entering adolescence and is still a child, a literal little girl or little boy child. Some 12 year olds haven't even gone through puberty yet. Do you not understand? what you're saying there and why it's dangerous and how that is so not okay. It's the equivalent of saying that when you were 17, well, sorry, when, when you got your driver's license, if you're 19 and you're dating a 12 or 13 year old, let's say 12, just, just for the sake of easy numbers, because I don't math. When you were 16, getting your driver's license, that child was 10 years old. When you became a teenager, that child was in, like, second grade. Get a grip. In the live stream, ah, Lily Jean ah. claims that her boyfriend, Philippe, is nine years older than her and that they met when she was nine years old. While Lily Jean struggles with addition, this would make Philippe 18 years old at the time they began their friendship. She also claims that they began their romantic relationship when she was 14 years old. This would make Philippe 23 years old when their romantic involvement began, and age 28 years at the time of the recording. The age of consent is the age at which a person is considered to be legally competent to consent to sexual acts. Consequently, an adult who engages in sexual activity with a person younger than the age of consent is unable to legally claim that the sexual activity was consensual, and such sexual activity may be considered child sexual abuse or statutory rape. The person below the minimum age is regarded as the victim, and their sex partner is regarded as the offender, unless both are underage. The child purpose of setting an age of consent is to protect an underage person from sexual advances. Child grooming is befriending and establishing an emotional connection with a child, and sometimes the family, to lower the child's inhibitions with the objective of sexual abuse. To establish a good relationship with a child and the child's family, child groomers might do several things. They might try to gain the child's or parent's trust by befriending them, with the goal of easy access to the child. A trusting relationship with a family means the child's parents are less likely to believe potential accusations. Child groomers might look for opportunities to have time alone with the child, which can be done by offering to babysit. The groomers may also invite the child for sleepovers, for opportunistic bed sharing. Lord admitted in a video from May 2020 that he and Lily Jean were allowed unsupervised time alone in Lily Jean's bedroom before she was an adult. In New York, where Lily Jean resides, it is illegal for an adult, someone 18 or older, to have sex with a minor, someone younger than 17, even if the sex is consensual. Those who break the law have committed statutory rape. In New York State, parental consent is not considered a defense for statutory rape. In fact, the state itself is allowed to press charges if the parent declines to do so. The legal They made so many videos later, well, Lore made videos that, and she doubled down that she gave consent. She actually lied and tried to say that Lily Jean was almost 17. But meanwhile, we literally saw her in this um, live that you're seeing clips of here. And she said she was 12 and 13. And then that they officially started dating when she was 14. But it was okay because mom gave consent. No, no, no. Lore, you broke the law. Lily... If, and I say if, but we all know that he's not, but 
if this had really happened, then you were a grooming victim. So stop crying when people tell you that and just admit he was fake. Admit he was fake and it all goes away. If he was real, then he's a criminal. But we know that he's fake. But Laura, unfortunately, is not fake in this essence and actually said she would give permission for that. So that would be criminal. To be clear, no one knows for certain if Lily Jean is a victim of child grooming and abuse. For all we know, she and Philippe maintained a chaste relationship for the first three or so years of their romantic in- Well, we do know because Lily's lies always get out of control and, you know, she said he was a, f a French diplomat and we all had our fun doing our research knowing that she- well, there is only one American- or French American diplomat named Philippe. And like I was saying, if this wasn't was true, then yes, Lore should have gone to jail. CPS should have apprehended Lily Jean and there should have been criminal charges had this been real. But again, it wasn't very sensitive. Drawing comparisons to violent crimes when describing perceived slights against her is appalling. Giving incorrect and dangerous advice to her young fans is irresponsible. My hope is that Lily Jean will at least try to make amends for her words, and more so that she will stop being so careless with her statements going forward. It's a lot to hope for, considering her track record of denial, false apologies, and complete silence, but one can only hope. And I'm just going to add a few receipts regarding Luna, who we mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, just uh, in case there was any doubts that this actually happened and that there was harassment regarding a child. Keep that in mind. In the most recent days, Tater Tatiana is a YouTuber with a substantial following who has been under fire, under attack by Laura and Lily Jean. They've gone out of their way to try to push her off of every social platform possible, and it needs to stop. As you can see, Tatiana has lots of support, and there are so many of us that are willing to rally behind her, so while she's on a break, the rest of us are not. From one woman. Tatiana, the only reason you're here is because of that woman. I tried talking to your friend Barbara, and still, we tried working out a deal with you. I tried with Barbara, with my mom, to work out just a thing where we just won't talk about each other, we're nothing. The thing is, I never spoke about you until this year, this month. I never spoke about you. So why, why, for money, is it worth it, girl? Is it worth it? Barbara tried to work out a deal and the last minute you betrayed your friend. The last minute you put on YouTube something for attention. You betrayed Barbara. You betrayed yourself. It's not 
funny, it's not a joke, it's not a game. You could genuinely just have a makeup channel, do whatever. You could do that, but you hold yourself back by listening to people like Wig Ann. Oh my god, girl, you're like my age. Just stop. If I lose any more because of you spreading defamation and the season D that you were sent in October. What, Lily? If you lose, then what? Exactly what are you going to do about people learning the truth, people talking about the truth, and refusing to stop? It's not going to stop until you stop, until you change your behavior. But that's not going to happen. I used to think there was a chance for you. I really, really used to root for you to like grow into your own, get out from under the, your mom's spell or whatever it is. But it's been over two years now of watching this train wreck, and you've just got worse. Worse and worse with every word that comes out of your mouth. And it seems like the more you try to fix things, the worse you show your true colors. It's ridiculous. Lily Jean is a verified public figure on Instagram and has a YouTube channel with over 13,000 subscribers. I'm a commentary channel who has every right to speak about her and her terrible actions within fair use. She isn't the only public figure that I've covered and she definitely won't be the last. But she's the only one who's gone off on hate campaigns against me and has attempted to send their fan base on malicious attacks towards me. She's the only one to have wished death and COVID on me. She's the only one who docks me multiple times while claiming I've done the same. I do not need any permission to use her content as long as it falls under fair use, which all of my content has. I strongly believe Lily is not meant to be a social media influencer, as she clearly is incapable of handling criticism and owning up to her mistakes. Everything she has said about me is untrue, and while I stress about it at first, I eventually calm down when I realize that nobody really believes her. Everything I've said regarding Lily Jean has been backed with evidence and sources. They're not defamatory if I'm willing and able to prove my claims. If you don't want people talking about how much of a shitty person you are, don't be a shitty person. I never shared her address online. I never created fake accounts to contact brands who have affiliations with her. I never groomed or preyed on her. I was not aware she existed until a few weeks before her 19th birthday, and I was 22 at the time. Lily Jean is a known liar. Everyone knows this by now. The only one she's fooling into believing she's actually a victim is herself. It's sad, but she's gone too far.